Hello, everybody. Please like and subscribe if you are absolutely delighted that Aston Villa have ended a brilliant calendar year of 2023 with a huge, nerve-wracking, nail-biting 3-2 victory over Burnley. So, Villa finish 2023, having played 20 games, joint top of the league. We're two points clear of Man City. We're level on points with Leather Pill. Two points ahead of Arsenal. We have a game in hand. Nine ahead of United. Incredible. We've hit the magical 40-point mark. Sorry, 11 ahead of Man United, I mean. Um, we've hit the magic 40-point mark, so we're probably not going to get relegated this season. So thank the, go the gods for that. Um, well... How do we feel after that? There was a long period of that game where I just I bit my nails off to the point where I currently almost bit my own fingers off. Um, didn't enjoy that. Did not enjoy that game at all. But, you know, let's face it. This December has been a very, very tough month with lots of massive games in which Aston Villa have exerted a lot of energy, a lot of physicality. Um, and, uh, you know, we picked up some incredible wins. Dominated Manchester City. Three days later, beat Arsenal. Um, we've beaten Brentford away, who don't tend to lose at home very often. Um, and then uh, followed all that up with a, you know, a tough game against Sheffield United, who just came and basically sat every man behind the ball. Um, really tough day away at Old Trafford, where two 0 ahead, lose three two. Lots of energy again exerted in that. And then a couple of days later, we once again have to play at home against Burnley, who, you know, are probably a little bit more confident having just been to Fulham and won 2-0. So, that they've, you know, maybe they've found a little bit of a formula to find their way in this league anyway. With Villa, it kind of felt like uh, similar patterns to what we've seen before um, in that Villa were largely the ball-dominant side. Uh, we had 66% of the possession today. And in the first half, you just kind of felt like, a goal's going to come here. But we didn't really find our way through. Now, I think we really miss Bubakar Kamara. Uh, I think we really miss a fit and firing Jacob Ramsey and a fit and firing Alex Moreno. I think we missed uh, a fit Pau Torres. More on him in a second about his impact in the second half. Um, we missed a, a Matty Cashley. We, mi a we missed Yuri Tielemans. So many players that we are just missing to, to sort of just fight your way through this month and get to the end of it and get that a hard win against Burnley, though he didn't perform great, he still managed to win it. You know, that is pretty important um, for Villa. And that those could be a massive three points at the end of this season now. Um, but anyway, we, despite all those players missing and despite players still coming back from fitness, we're probably playing a bit more than they would be if our squad was a bit stronger than it currently is. Um First half, we couldn't really play our way through Burnley's 4-4-2. Um, and it kind of felt like the two goals we did score were, well, the most danger we were causing Burnley was just through balls over the top. So the first goal, uh, Diego Carlos with a diagonal ball that he likes to play. Ollie Watkins' movement, the birth of Ollie Watkins, fantastic movement from him. He picked up two assists today, gets the ball out left, runs into, our, uh, into the box, what a, a brilliant piece of work it was. Brilliant striker's work from Molly Watkins. It's not just about scoring. It's about your work off the ball as well, isn't it? And the amount of assists he's now got this season. I believe it's eight he's now got this season. Uh, must be up there at top of the Premier League, right? Um, lovely ball into uh, Leon Bailey, who uh, Leon Bailey is in absolute electric form. He saved the day today. The penalty came about because of his um, skill and movement, uh, his, his intelligence, Leon Bailey is currently one of the best players in the Premier League, genuinely. And I think if you were to do uh, an end of season, uh, you know, PFA award right now, a halfway point, see, I, I think Leon Bailey is in the is in the conversation. He's been absolutely sensational, uh, and he was brilliant again today. Every time he got the ball, Burnley just looked like they couldn't really handle him, even when they doubled up on him. Um, but then. Uh, Villa's second goal came again through a long ball over the top from Esri Konsa. Watkins' movement again, superb. Great ball in to uh, Moose Diaby, who uh, needed a goal and got his goal. Thank the gods. Hopefully now that sort of sort of um, middling form he's been showing in front of goal will hopefully sweep away, though in the second half he did miss quite a few big chances. Um, but I think where you'd be critical of Villa first half is that on one occasion... 
well, the goal we conceded, of course, um, straight after the first goal we scored, it was just chaotic defending, um, overloaded at the back post. I, I honestly, I just, just a, cl- a sort of classic goal you can see just after you've scored when you're not really at full concentration. That was poor, uh, poor goal to concede, and uh, got very, very lucky when Longley was an inch ahead of Lyle Foster, who Foster. All day long was fantastic at leading the line for Burnley. I don't think we coped with him at all well. Um, I think against the high line, he was fairly comfortable. Um, and I think that he was winning. He was holding the ball up well. He was uh, physically uh, bullying our defence. And he just felt that at some point he's going to get in and have a big chance to score. Almost happened for him in the first half and he finished it, but he was offside. Second half, he got that chance and it happened for him. Um so second half, I think Burnley started well, but Villa, um, again, we sort of worked our way back into the game and it felt like Diaby and Bailey were really causing quite a lot of problems for them, I think, with their partnership. Um, and we really should have gone 3-1 up at pretty much any point. But uh, Sander Burge gets red carded, then they're down to 10 men and you're thinking, now surely we're going to blow them away. On comes Pau Torres. And Torres, you know, we've, we have missed him in the last two games because... As soon as he came onto the pitch, I thought Longley had looked quite unsure of himself all, all game. Uh, and I just kind of felt like he, he there was a mistake waiting to happen there. It might not have happened, but, you know, he wasn't giving me loads of confidence. But then for uh, um, for Pau Torres to come onto the pitch and suddenly with him pushing forward, Alex Moreno looked much more involved. So it felt like the Longley and Alex Moreno partnership wasn't really happening. And then once Moreno got more into it because Moreno, because Pau Torres was passing the ball to him a, bit, a little bit more and a bit sharper, once Torres, uh, Moreno got more involved, Ramsey got more involved as well. Now, the two of those players, particularly Ramsey, we just have to be patient with. I'm sure they're playing a lot more than we would have wanted now that Luca Dean is injured and that, you know, Tielemans has been injured. I'm sure Ramsey and Moreno would have been a bit in and out of the team as they sort of slowly get their way back to form and fitness. Instead, they've been thrown in at the deep end and having to play full 90 minutes straight away. That's not ideal. So we just got to be patient with those two. But, you know, there was a period of time there when Villa had a million chances when the two of them were causing a lot of problems for Burnley down the left. Hopefully we're going to see more and more of that as the season progresses and they find more of their form of fitness. And it's nice to see them play with Pau Torres. Because like I said, when Pau Torres came on, Villa looked much more threatening. And I think that's where a lot of our chances came from. Of course, Burnley were also down to 10 men, so that helped. But uh, um, Diaby missed some massive chances, didn't he? Um, he, he? I mean, particularly the one that Watkins laid off for him that he hit over the bar. I mean, and you could feel it then. You felt if Villa just didn't score, I mean, it could have been four, five, four or five, one, really. And it just felt if we didn't score... They were going to get a very simple ball over the top. They'd win a header, he'd bounce in behind us and Lyle Foster would get in. And guess what happened? Exactly that. Because you'd seen the warning signs there a couple of times in the first half. There was a couple of those long balls, um, a player coming across from wide, winning a header, just knocking it on. And Lyle Foster timing his run well and getting in behind or whoever was forward at the, mo- at the moment that happened. You- you could see that was happening, and I'm sure Burnley co- were coached to do that. Because let's face it, teams are now going to have watched Aston Villa a lot this season and worked out ways to play against the high line. They'll be better prepared for the high line. So this is going to be a new challenge for Villa in the second half of the season when teams try to do those low blocks again, like Sheffield United did, or just try and hit us, you know, try and contain us as much as they can while then just hitting us quickly over the top. More and more teams are going to do it. Um, and... It's just something we're going to have to adapt to. And the thing is, if you're going to play the high line, you got to take your chances that you create because of the ball dominance you likely have. And the thing is, we didn't take those chances today and almost got very, very deeply punished. That would have been a massively disappointing result, I'm afraid, had we drawn that. But Yonderan, the one-man chaos merchant, the, uh, I mean, how do you describe that? It was like a... It's like going to a rave and it's just a DJ mixing every piece, every genre of music you've got. It's it's 80s East Coast hip hop. And then a minute later, he's playing classical music, play, you know, composed by Beethoven. And then straight after that, he's on to bloody rock and roll from the 60s. You're like, what, what the hell are the Rolling Stones playing? What's going on now? Pulp? You're playing pulp now? Seriously? In the 90s? Because it was just like, it was every single thing he could do. You're throwing like everything into the into the cooking pot, and uh, 
he's he's just wild, wild. Um, the warm, like a wild tackle to get a book in. I mean, what was that all about? But then he, defensively, he won a million headers. He won a massive block at the end, you know, uh, that led led Watkins to go on the break, got the ball away from our area and, and ultimately helped us see out the game. Uh, and then he won the penalty. Superb of him to get in front of Aaron Ramsey. Poor Aaron Ramsey. I feel very sorry for him. He's had a he's a very talented player, Aaron Ramsey. And I think he reminds me a little bit of his brother and Emmy Buendia. Sort of has that vibe about him. And I think uh, you know, I think he'll he'll you know he'll 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 bounce back from that. And I think if he gets more and more game time in the Premier League, he'll get more used to it and become a very effective player for Burnley. But sadly today it wasn't to be for him. And um Deadly Douglas Ruiz steps up and it took about a million years to take the penalty. Uh, when he hit the underside of the the bar, I thought, you know, we've missed so many chances today. Is this just going to be like the, the cherry on the cake and going to be a really disappointing way to end what's been a brilliant calendar year? But instead, nope. In it goes. And uh, Aston Villa end this calendar year with a big win. We didn't see the game out that well in injury time. You know, we kind of were giving the ball away, but... You know, Burnley are the one who are chasing the game then at that point. So, you know, their energy levels are going to be a bit higher and naturally you're going to want to defend a bit more. So, uh, look, a massive win at the end of what has been a crazily competitive and a high energy month. I think players like uh, John McGinn and Douglas Ruiz deserve massive credit, played so much football, being so key for us. Uh, McGinn particularly having to play a more defensive role against Sheffield and uh, Burnley today, I think you really do lose something when Bubakar Kamara is not there. Really stupid sending off that was against Brentford. Had he not been sent off and had you know his presence changed a couple of the results against United and uh, Sheffield, uh, Man United and Sheffield United, we could be clear at the top of the league, couldn't we? But you know, one or two occasions I thought today our players got a little bit involved with silly bookings they didn't need. Jacob Ramsey with the penalty, you know, getting involved. Uh, Esri Conta chasing the, the, the referee down, having a go at him. It was just a bit like, why are we getting these like weak bookings that we don't need? Because those build up over the season and eventually the suspensions count for something, don't they? So a bit that's a bit irritating. I, I hope we kind of get that out of our game a little bit, you know, because it, it, it sort of followed on from what Bubakar Kamara did at Brentford with that stupid red card he got. But anyway, look, I don't want to dwell on that too much. The, uh, the, the uh, It's a big win in a game that easily could have got away from us. And, you know, I've lived through the season of 1998-99. I lived through the O'Neill era. And in those seasons, we had a lot of false dawns where we were at the top of the league, close to the top of the league, looked like we were going to be real Champions League contenders. And we fell away because of stupid results. Today, we didn't allow that stupid result to happen. We got the win we needed. We fought through... Uh, you know, against a team who were, you know, probably feeling good about themselves, having fought their way back into the game, but and were defensively pretty stout, uh, but managed to get the uh, the win we needed, which was absolutely key because we just, if if had we not got it, it just ends this year on a sour note, doesn't it? And it makes you look ahead thinking, oh, what are we about now? Causes of a concern, I think other teams are slowly starting to get used to the high line, so that's something that we to get to look out for, I think. Um, and uh, can we take our chances, basically? Because this season we've scored, we've had a lot of games where we've scored loads and loads of goals. And I think, you know, um, we have generally done well at taking our chances. I think today was hopefully just a bit of an aberration. Um, but uh, uh, something else as well, I just think the energy levels were a little bit lower today. So thankfully we're through this month now with a win and we can, you know, it's a little bit easier now all the way through to March. Not as much, you know, game time a couple of players can work their way back to full fitness a couple of players hopefully could come back from injury and illness as Matty Cash had today um so yeah thank you Professor Unai for what has been a fantastic 2023 thank you so much to the Aston Villa players for giving us this year for making every single weekend that Villa play something that so many of us look so so forward to honestly it has been a, a light uh in my year and you know in some of the dark times i just think of villa and think oh that makes me happy and villa have not i think given me uh that feeling for a very very long time um fantastic thank you professor Unai. 
What a year. Thank you to the Villa players. Thank you to all of you who watch and uh, subscribe to this podcast. It means so much, and particularly all the lovely comments I get. Um, you know, I could read off a whole bunch of people who say such nice things. Thank you all. Uh, comment below. Let me know what you thought of the game. Let me know what you thought of a superb 2023. Villa have won. We're joint top of the league. Up the mighty Villa. <laughs>